can't have console with ZX in the title that actually exists. Yes, the ZX Vega, Vega, hmm, doesn't matter. Well, it kind of exists um, in terms of being a plastic piece of tat that probably cost a few pounds to make and turned up for a very, very few people. Still rumbling on, um, but uh, yeah, and that's not a script you can hear rumbling here. I'm not prepared. Um, no, I've printed some things out because I was on eBay looking for handheld stuff because um, we had some interesting things earlier. Actually, it was late last year, wasn't it? And uh, I saw this five inch games console, if you can see that there. Um, TV out picture is larger and more fun. Support key plus 360 remote control op 360 remote control operation. Yeah, um, you know, some of this stuff you see. Lots of games. Games that actually exist. Look at that. Some of those you may recognize, some you may not. I don't recognize. 1942, I recognize them. And look at this. It looks like a looks like PSP. So I thought, well, 30 pounds, 30 pounds, all this bump they give you on the web page. Um, multifunction capability, multifunction, multifunction compatibility, including recording facilities in a cassette tape form, TV out movie player, um, electronic books, picture function. Oh, I can't this camera. And this uh, console is listed for 23 pounds in the smaller screen version. Um, and uh, 32 pounds now, but this cost me 29 pounds 99 in the five inch version, which is the version I ordered. And uh, it was posted from the United Kingdom, um, which really doesn't explain the appalling English in some of the listing, but never mind. Also, curiously, listed a 64 bit handheld games console in the listing there. And then we go down to one of the other screens, and it's 32 bit with a thousand games. Uh, but there we are, 64-bit with 10,000 plus, make your mind up lads, 64-bit and 10,000 plus games, or 32-bit with 1,000 plus. I suppose 10,000 plus, 1,000 plus is correct if you've got 10,000 plus, but 32-bit, 64, uh, just, yeah. Uh, Spec-wise, well, let's open the device up before we get into specifications. Let's get that out the way. And put those over there. Yes, we have the box. And uh, that's uh, Ryu or Ken or someone from Street Fighter. I'm not very really good on uh, these some of these games, but uh, it's the S9000A ZX 5.1 high definition digital display screen. Mm. Um, SRS Well HD real player. <laughs> Now, I know I've had this hanging around for a little while. I ordered this at the start of August, and it's now the first week in December. But come on, real player, lads. You've got support for real player. H.264, HD ready, but HD ready there. USB, play Windows Media. And uh, PS, PS Vita memory card sold separately required for most gameplay. PS Vita. Now, I'm not up on my modern consoles. Um, this claims to have an SD card reader. SD card support. So it's up to 32 gigabytes. I don't have one that... Um, all mine 64 at the moment, so I can't test that. So we got things on the side, more lies. Or perhaps they're not lies. Perhaps they're just ludicrous things to say. Support multi-languages, 20, type, 20 types of languages. Um... Support CPS, GBA, SMC game. I assume that's there with GBA's Game Boy Advance games, isn't it? SMC. Built-in lithium-ion battery. Um, TV out capability and built-in speaker. Supports SD card, 32 gig. 1.3 million pixel camera for photo and video record. Now, that's not as much as it sounds, is it? That's one megapixel. Yeah, that's, that's not a lot. Support plays MP3 and, and so on. Supports video files. Photo browser. Ebook. Calc I, can't, I can't read. Calendar. Alarm. Resource manager. 
an earphone and hold switch. Anything else? Any promises? And we have it in blue. Let's see what's in the package. Clue, I've already opened this up and I know what's in here. And uh, open we go, up we go. And uh, you get a TV lead. Got the console itself. We've got a manual. Oh, that's gonna be gold, isn't it? USB charging lead. A pair of headphones that look like Apple ones of the old type, but won't be. And the console itself, which is a little bit dusty because I have and fingerprints on it because I have charged this up today. I haven't played it for a little while, but I tested it when I first got it. Um, it's not a scratch on the screen, is it? All right, scratch the screen there. Hmm, don't know. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's the that's the console itself. Um, trying to look like a PSP, isn't it? Got fingerprints on it from when I did it. There's the there's actually 1.3 megapixel camera. Um, one speaker on the back, not stereo. Five volts, 500 milliamps. That's your 360 degree remote control. You've got kind of D-pad there. And the blue, yeah. I mean, this thing attracts fingerprints like no one else's business. Uh, you've got volume controls on the top. USB charging on the top. You can charge and play a game at the same time if you want to. One of those, right, there's two headphone sockets on there, but clearly one of them is going to be for the TV out, unless they do both do TV out. Got shoulder bumpers there and there, and we presumably have some kind of, we've got a thing for a lanyard that it doesn't come with there. Um, where's the SD card slot? Right, I won, uh, hmm, is that micro SD there? Is that micro SD or PS Vita or our PS Vita and micro SD the same? We've got a microphone there as well. Let's check the manual before we go any further because I'm sure there's gonna be hilarity within. Use a manual. Oh, it's tiny text. I cannot possibly read that from here. Let me quickly scan through it and see if I can find anything hilarious. Just been through it. No, it seems to be pretty well translated and it's interestingly points out a couple of things in there. Something about DRM and clearing DRM. So there may be some kind of defeat mechanism for some kind of DRM in the device, whether for video or games, I don't know. But the other thing in here it mentions is it can have a firmware upgrade as well. So you can upgrade the firmware in there. It's quite nice. I've not seen one of these before that actually has the ability to upgrade the firmware. Let's turn her on. On we go. We've got a menu. I think the thing to do here is going to be to turn the lights off and see what we can see. Two seconds. Right, so here we go. Um, I noticed the screen's quite blue. Um, I don't know how to show on camera, but we do our best. So we've got, and I'm not going to play these games very well, we've got some games built in here. Super Mario, Contra, Battle City, The King of... Oh, it's a slow scroller. Fighters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Hero Turtles, Street Fighter, two, Final Fight, and uh, some other things here. These bits of text, the first thing that strikes you is <laughs> where it's too long to sc scroll through. It, it it gives you scrolling, but you can't necessarily read very well what's going on. I'm trying to angle this for you. I hope you're seeing this okay. Um, yeah, so you can't read what's going on there. Let's try a game. We can play Mario now. Nintendo aren't going to take the channel down or put adverts on it. Um, restart, low progress, option quit. Let's try restart. Ooh, spot the problem. Do you spot the problem? It's 4x3 stretched to 16x9. This is the NES game, isn't it? Any volume? Start. Start. Oh, 
you know, it's definitely a mono speaker. Um, when, can you see that on the left hand side, when I press the button, there's the screen, press that button there, you get little bits on the LCD. Um, yeah, and no, I am at a really funny angle here, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not expecting the LCD to actually react when I'm pressing buttons due to pressure. Is that when you put your finger on a computer monitor? Just there. Oh, oh you can see that. Can you see that? But you're getting it when you press the buttons. It's shimmering. That's distracting. The screen's, not, the screen's quite, quite nice and sharp, actually, um, in this resolution. Look, it's not as good as Sonic. Oh, you can't go... Because, of course, you, sometimes you can go down things, sometimes you can't. Because Mario... Right, let's get rid of that. Is there an option to change the screen? Option. Display mode. Aha! Normal. So it's defaulted to full screen. But... No, no, I want... So now if I try Mario, will it be in a proper... That's, that's better. And of course, now you can't see where I'm pressing. Well, you can actually, but... But now it's... Because of course, it's not actually 4x3 anyway, so it's kind of... Or is it? Was it always narrow? Because that's not 4x3, that's narrower than 4x3. Can I go down there? No, because there's no logic to any of this. Woo, Mario. Can I go down there? No. Can I go down there? No. What well, that one? No. Oh, I can go down that one. Hey, logic. So we've got other things on here as well. We've got Final Fight. You can put your own games on here. We have a camera. And how good's the camera? Capture. When this light, I mean, I'm not expecting much, but um, it's quite uh, magnified. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll see what results we can get with that. 1024 by 768. <laughs> On the upside, you can take 67,701 pictures with it. How wonderful. Oh, no. And it takes that long to save it. And it has a zoom, a digital zoom. Way. Yeah. Anyway, that shows you off the screen and what it looks and sounds like directly as you're going to be using it. Let's plug this in directly into Capture and see it uh, in more detail. Here we go then, over to Capture, and it's composite only. And I've been having trouble with my um, connector lead as well, so hopefully the picture and sound's going to be okay. So we can load in classic games, which are already on here. You've got all these games on here. So here's a Super Mario Kart game, presumably a Game Boy Advance game. And the thing is, I'm going to show you these games. I'm going to show you another game as well on the Game Boy Advance. I can't tell you if this is running properly or not. I can tell you if it feels bad, but I can't tell you. It's way beyond the remit of Chini Vision. I had a Game Boy um, DS with advanced games on it a long time ago, but I couldn't tell you how this is running. So we're just going to run the game and see how it works. We're currently in PAL 50 frames a second mode, and there is a, the machine also has a 60 frames a second mode as well, and, and by default it runs in 60. Mushroom Cup. And off we go as Barry the Plumber, or whatever his name is. And the frame rate doesn't feel correct. It, the input is incredibly laggy as well. And I'm looking at this on a sc big screen. It's it's not, not a pleasant experience. I know the Game Boy Advance had a very low resolution screen, but there's no reason for this to feel so disjointed, even with capture delay. I'm used to capture delay to an extent. 
but it feels like about a second later before anything happens on the controls. And I'm not a terribly good Mario Kart player, but this is no fun at all. We can try this in 60 frames a second. It's slightly better. Slightly, and I do mean very, very slightly. The sound effects don't sound... Again, I could be wrong. I just don't have a frame of reference here, guys. Um, it, it doesn't feel right. Here's another game that comes built in. Teenage Mutant Hero Tur Ninja Turtle. Sorry. Yeah! Sorry. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtle. Ninja. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Heroes in a Half Shell. Turtle Power. Yeah, because they were called Hero Turtles in the UK because ninjas apparently would turn kids into criminals who want to slash people's faces and stuff with ninja skills and the things. There's a lot of exposition in the start, and April appears to have gone a makeover. In fact, they've all gone a makeover, haven't they? Plays fine. Couldn't tell you how well, really, that, that is. Like, I really couldn't tell you. It seems to work, though, and enjoyable game. Can't say anything more. We need to do something a bit more to the point, really. And the console does come, as we saw before, with Super Mario Brothers. And look at those weird blocking. I'll, I'll pause that. Look at that weird blocking when the frames change. Something horrible here. Right, I'm not a Mario expert, but I've shown this to a few people who are, and I've got a few feelings as well myself. Seems to be frame skipping going on. The music is wrong. The speed is slightly wrong. And it's just generally not pleasant to play. The image looks horrific on a large screen. Really, really soft. And, and blocky with it as well. Look at the text at the top. It's soft, yet pixelated. Horrible. This is Exciter Bike. Feels better than the Mario game, but there's still frame skip going on and not particularly accurate. Space Harrier. Again, it trying, it's, it's trying, but it's not right. And anything that has a fade ends up with those blocks going diagonally across the screen for some weird reason. But hey, what you're really going to be after one of these devices for is the SNES emulation, right? There's, I can't find any SNES games built into the machine, but you can load in them via an SD card, a micro SD card. And be warned, the micro SD card slot is incredibly violent. You hit eject and it will throw your micro SD card across the room. Oh, I love fantastically violent consumer devices like cassette recorders in the 70s. Just to show you here, these Plock by the Pickford Brothers, 60 hertz on the left, 50 hertz on the right. And there is a speed difference, as you can see. And the thing is, even when it's running in 60 hertz, the speed's still wrong. There's massive slowdown problems, absolutely huge game-breaking slowdown problems. The console is not fast enough to run SNES games. The moment there's sprites or anything, it goes down to a crawl, and when the sprites have gone off the screen, it speeds up again. It can, yeah, technically speaking, it can emulate a SNES and it can run SNES games. The problem is the games are not remotely playable. We're not talking about frame skip or anything like that. We're talking half the speed it needs to be at times. It's absolutely diabolical. And all the, and the, and the yeah, okay, there is frame skip as well, but it's just not. Look at this. This is Plock, a wonderful, smooth, brilliant game. And it's. It's like running a game intended for a 486 on a low end 386 when the processor just can't cope. And they're selling these devices on the basis they can play SNES games. It just cannot. Nothing I try runs satisfactorily unless there's nothing going on. Um, it, it just can't cope. There's no point in me going through a list of games because. Everything I try on the snares is a complete disaster. The NES games work, but they're wrong, but they're playable. They're just about playable. I mean, I found Mario incredibly laggy, but some of the games like Excited Bike just about work, and the emulation is very substandard, but you, you could live with it, I guess. 
Game Boy Advance emulation, you'll have to look at the footage I put on there because I've got no idea if those games are running properly or not. But I can tell you this, Mario Kart felt slow and laggy and sound effects didn't sound right from my experience of other Mario Kart games. The device also has other useful features. Someone said to me, does it run Android? It does not. It's got a custom operating system. It could be a music player. And you can play the music when you're in the other apps on the device, like um, the calculator or the book reader. It also has a video player, and the video playing is as disastrous as the game emulation. Very pixelated output. Although it looks better on the screen, but upscaled onto a large screen TV, it looks disastrous. Okay, this video here started out as low quality, but it just makes everything blockier than it was to begin with. This device promises much and doesn't do any of it particularly well. And this is a very quick bit of a trailer that's on. I can't show much of that because of copyright reasons. But even with a full quality trailer there, it's, it's disastrous. Oh, it's recording. It took four seconds to start recording. Um, I have to be quite far back to do this. It's going across the top of my workbench there. Yeah, this is great quality. Let's go and close on that CPC board there. Yeah. It's really good. So the S9000A ZX, whatever it's called. Well, for the price, mm, you see, when we've reviewed other devices on this channel before where we've bought 15 pound handheld mega drives and they've been not terribly good but just about usable for the kids they're fine this device costs a lot more and it doesn't do anything particularly well i dare say you could get better nes emulation on many other devices 64 bit 32 bit goodness knows i all i want to do is smash the thing into many many bits on the screen itself, when you're playing the device just as a handheld, the battery life isn't particularly good. I think you probably can get about three hours out of it, given the battery drain I've had when using it, perhaps a little bit more. It has a lot of built-in games. Um, that might appeal to you. That might be you can plug it into your computer, download the games off it and use those for something else, especially when Nintendo games are hard to come by these days. That might be useful for you. But... But there's so many better ways to emulate machines these days. It isn't a case of a 15 quid device that's a little bit substandard, but you go, hey, it's 15 quid. This costs more, and it doesn't do anything particularly well. And the real important thing here is it promises SNES emulation, and it just cannot do it in any way, shape, or form. You might forgive it. If it has SNES emulation, just slightly subpar like the NES emulation, you might forgive this device but it can't do it it just cannot do it at all the button layouts also look fine when you start to use them but the device actually isn't particularly pleasant to hold it feels quite cheap as well and you've got those screen issues where you press buttons and the screen starts shimmering as well overall the s9000a promises a hell of a lot and completely fails on every single level do not be taken in and do not be taken in by other youtube channels who review this put affiliate links on the channel and go hey it's great buy one i wouldn't touch around these with the barge pole there's a one handheld i think that's worse than this thing and it's called the vega <laughs>